Now let us begin our session. This session theme is new perspective in quality assurance for inculcating skill education through ODL. For this session, I request uh, Professor M. Bhaskaran, Vice Chancellor, Tamil Nadu Open University, to chair the session. In this session, there are two speakers, Professor Ram Thakavli, sir, former Vice Chancellor of this University and Pune University, as well as IGNU, and uh, one more speaker, Asha Kamwar, pres uh, President and CEO of Commonwealth of Learning Canada, but uh, uh, she has sent video, and uh, we will be going through the video, whatever she has sent. Now I request Takavle sir to present uh, his theme, New Perspective in Quality Assurance for Inculcating Skill Education through ODL and Right Brain Training. Mr. Chairman and friends, uh, it appears that this is the second day and uh, those who are interested in going to the end and knowing various aspects of this theme apparently uh, are here and this is a very much interested group, I suppose. Uh, so I'm going to talk on this and I'm thankful to Professor Salunke for giving me this topic because when he gave me topic with the right brain training right I was not knowing much about it though I was reading brain based education quite frequently and with interest but I have never studied it so this gave me an opportunity of studying this brain based learning linking it with the new education experiments which we are doing it and how it is going to affect our future direction of education. These were the two, three points which I wanted to study. And therefore, what I did was, I changed the theme slightly. Perspectives in quality assurance for inculcating skill education, but I believe skills are always included in education, and therefore education and that too I called it new education because it is a digital society education. And therefore it is a perspectives in quality education, new education, dropped ODL, I gave you the reason it is dead. And then instead of right brain training, I introduced brain based learning. Learning is a wider concept. Training is more restricted to the routine type of operations being done by somebody. And therefore, I thought that this will be a generalized topic, which I can do better, or I can do justice better. And that's why this generalized theme. Well, I'll be talking about perspectives in quality assurance, in new education, and in brain-based learning. I'm going to go in a reverse direction. First, brain-based learning. Now, what is brain-based learning? Firstly, one has to understand what is brain. All of us are having it. So everybody knows it. Its weight is about 2% of the body weight. 
but it consumes 20% of the oxygen needed by the body. So much of consumption. That means if brain is not active, whole body cannot work apparently. Needs blood supply continuously, so continuously, a second is gap and we are fainted. Three minute gap and some part is damaged already. So this is the situation of a brain and you have to keep it always active and running. It is made up of neurons and we are having about one abja neuron or one thousand million neurons. And then new research to tell us. Earlier we used to think that only 10% brain is being used. So education is had a great field. So remaining neurons could be put in operations and we can rather develop brain like anything. That is a wrong theory. New theory coming from neurosciences and psychology is that we use both the parts of the brain, whole brain. So that is, that is the new knowledge. Now, just read those four lines given in capital letters. It's a very small thing. Can you find out how many Fs are there? Just raise a hand and tell me the number. Not. How many Fs are there? Not a difficult task. Tell it, tell it, tell it. You are right. Three. 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 <laughs> Answers could be three or six. The real answer is six. <laughs> you have forgotten to count F in off, OF. Have you realized this point? <laughs> That's why you came to four. So, this is the problem. This is the problem of your learning that I see is like a camera. It has all the pictures. But we perceive only what we have recorded and can count. So seeing by the eye and perceiving that information are different processes. And they are very subjective processes. So everybody's brain or everybody is different. That is the basic point. So you cannot treat them alike, one fit for all. This is a completely wrong theory. So this is the whole point that perception of brain and eyesight are different and therefore we are having more of a subjective reality than the objective reality. And therefore everyone is different. Nature of learning should be different. I mean this is one big lesson we get for education. And if you are going against, now this brain composition. We are having left brain and right brain and some sort of a networking in between left and right. Left brain is a thinking brain, does all the analysis, recognizes part of the whole. So whenever it sees it, it goes to the parts and knows the details. Right brain has a holistic approach, synthetic approach. So it does synthesis and finds out what is the whole, adds all its experiences and imagination also. So whole is being looked at it differently and parts is being rather considered by left brain differently. One is logical, another is synthetic. One is rather rational and uh, process-based learning, another is imaginative and creative way of looking at it. So these two parts of the brain work differently. Now, which brain we should promote? Or should we promote both or one? This is the whole point. And therefore, the left brain processes are linear processes and sequential, as we need it in any scientific process. Right brain rather does it differently. It conceives the whole, looks at the patterns, and tries to find out the relationship between the patterns, and recognizes it. It does parallel processing. Now, amongst men and women, you'll find that women are excellent in parallel processing. Well, it's a term which I have taken from the computer sciences. So they can simultaneously look at the kitchen, something is cooking. 
look at the child because she is uh, the child is shouting something or asking something there is a phone call ringing she can rather go to that and do it she can simultaneously do so many tasks and quite successfully too man doesn't do it <laughs> he does more on a rational basis linear basis and therefore this sort of a parallel process or perspectives are limited in case of a man these are the uh, different types of development because her brain is developed right brain is developed far better in case of human uh, men possibly we concentrated more on the logic reasoning and all all that then sometimes we call it other left brain intelligence is dissective intelligence one dissecting and go to the root of it but dissection always is the destroys process in between that we don't realize it and whereas the right brain does integration integrative intelligence i mean these are the two different approaches well actually artificial intelligence is being used much in machines machine learning and therefore artificial intelligence with complete logic and scientific approach is being followed in artificial machines and there is machine learning which is coming up now left brain can work more for that but what right brain can do cannot be done easily by the machines that is looking at the whole looking at the patterns complex patterns looking at the creative part of it because the difference between human being and the machine is that human being has will and ability to imagine this will and ability to imagine is completely different power which you cannot translate it to the machine so in future if we want to educate our children in the world of learning machines and smart machines we will have to concentrate not to compete machines but to create them friends make them friends and concentrate on the ability to innovate create recognize complex patterns and create complex patterns meghdoot cannot be created by any machine only kalidas could do it so such sort of complex creativity is possible only with the man not with the machine so this is the whole problem but be sure machine is going to defeat you in logical thinking and logical processing and if you give all the training and that's why the smart things are coming everywhere and smart thing means say well, you take your spect or you take your wrist watch and tomorrow's wrist watch or tomorrow's specs will be it will have sensors it will have absorption absorption by information it has a processing power somewhere concentrated and after processing it it activates something and sends that information to some server it goes to the server through internet and it go to the right kind of people so tomorrow my watch is not limited to give me time but it can give me my pulse my heart rate pressure if suppose i am going to get attack it can give the information to the doctor it is going to be completely different device within few years you will get it already people are working on that so tomorrow's world is going to be different so that is whole point and only you can retain your identity as human being if you are the strength than your right brain i mean that that is that is the only the conclusion one can have it now these are the processes i think some of this point i have already said it uh, right brain gives the holistic picture left brain sees the components right brain aids in subjective thought holistic thinking and intuition all essential part of development and learning learning with creativity learning with innovation so that is another point then in most education settings we promote only logical thinking and not the integrative thinking in digital age our focus of education has to shift this is a paradigm shift and shift on such issues which machines will not be able to follow i mean that is the distinction factor linking learning and development with innovation and imaginative imagination complex pattern recognition 
and creation of complex patterns. And there's a famous uh, example, deep blue computer of IBM had a chase bout with a world champion, uh, Gary Kasparov, I think Gary Kasparov, 1997. And this deep blue defeated world champion. And Gary Kasparov was asked, what is the preparation you will do when you come back again to challenge this deep blue? He said, I am going to come prepared. In what way? I will have a hammer in my hand and I am going to crush it. This is not, of course, a competition. But then the deep blue was defeated after 10 years by a group of uh, grandmasters. They took small computers in their hands and made each move. After every move, Deep Blue will process all the possibilities with very great speed and find out the best possibility and do it. These the four grandmasters decided that we'll change the strategy. And suddenly they changed the strategy in between. Now he was not able to adjust to the strategy. He was able to adjust uh, the, all the linear steps with all the logic. He was also the learning. So he tried to find out solutions for that and he spent a long time. Somewhere he succeeded, somewhere he failed. And these four grandmasters together defeated the blue computer after 10 years, 2007. What is the lesson for us? Don't compete with the computers and machines, but compete with them with strategies and creativity. I mean, that is, that is the lesson for us. And our education has to move in that direction now. Now, what is meant by uh, brain-based learning? We are having cognitivistic learning, we are having behavioristic learning, we are having constructivistic learning. Now, what is brain-based learning? Brain-based learning is simply learning following the processes of brain working and learning. Brain learns. It also works in certain particular way. So if you know the brain processes of working and learning, then you can adopt those processes in your education. So you need not look at any other theory. So if you can get that way, possibly you are getting the right approach for education. So that is the whole point. And therefore, one point is clear here, that this field is entirely new. It is based on neuroscience. And neuroscience is a branch which has been developed during the last Five, five to ten years. It's very recent. Then psychology and then computer science. Computer science because computer people use all these processing power in the machines. Neuroscience has been developed to such an extent to find out how brain works and then they create their own theories. This is because of scanning technologies, mapping technologies and networking technology. They put the uh, electrodes inside and just find out what is happening, what sort of movement is happening. So these are the new results. And brain evolves, this under finding, brain evolves anatomically and functionally. So far thinking was, once you are born, you are born with neurons. Say 1,000 million neurons. It doesn't increase. So it is a fixed amount. No, now it is proved that neurons can be added, it can be created. They can be changed in functionality. So it is a creation power and functionality changing is also a power which brain has and we should use that power in education. How do we do it? I mean that is the whole important point and therefore the Brain works as an organic body, left brain and right brain, and as a whole. Then it has a process and evolution. Best ways to look at the process. And what is the process and evolution? The brain-based learning that gives these four important components of the process. It has a mechanism, mechanism with different parts, each works differently. It has functions, these different parts coordinate their functions in such a way that brain works as a single entity, like a machine. So functions, 
Third one is development. There is always a continuous development going on inside. So that is another part of it. And evolution, it evolves. It changes internally, functionally as well as neuron-wise. Now this is the learning from the brain. Can we not adopt this in education then? If you do not adopt, you will not be able to learn or you will not be able to teach. You can put them in a mechanical grill like an animal and they will do it. Intelligent will do better, better. non-intelligent will fail. But that is not education. Education must have all these four elements in it. Now, the new education which we are thinking and which we are implementing is based on brain working. If you understand the brain working and put it that way, so new education processes are designed to suit brain function and brain working. Brain requires engagement, strategies and principles. All the three part. For its working and learning, this offers us a process of learning. A process of learning. It is not simply learning, but a process of learning. BBL suggests lifelong learning for continuous change in functions and its evolution. L3 enables people to live longer. Now, there are experiments. One experiment was on the rats. A rat was put, put in a, mouse was put in a cage with a rich environment. Another mouse was put in a, another cage with a poor uh, environment. So, rich environment was like a kindergarten, child can go and find so many things to play with. So they go on playing it. So this mouse was there doing all such sort of tricks and becoming happy or doing some, some sort of action continuously. Poor mouse somehow could not do anything except keep quiet or jump here or there or eat. That's all. Ultimately, they found a great difference between the two. Once logical life extended, it became more intelligent also in number of the actions. So this is a lesson. And there was another ex experiment. A group of nuns was staying in a monastery. And people knew that some of their nuns are more than 100 years old. And many of them are living longer. What is the secret of it? So research worker went and studied all their lifestyles. Found that they are having a number of hobbies. Continuously, they are changing their hobbies and learning something different, actively. Now, this active learning and lifelong learning increases your life. So, if you want to live longer, be a <laughs> lifelong learner and that too active learner. Uh, there is also another po point of it. Activity-based learning creates better learning and better evolution. Creating learning in terms of evolution is an important task. Because you have to evolve as an organism, as a system. Now this is an important aspect in any education, not the preservation alone, but evolution. But this activity of work is to be made organic or wholesome. I mean, this is the most important condition. Now, when work becomes organic or when work becomes wholesome work and concept of wholesome work has come in only in Nai Talim, nowhere else. And wholesome work has been defined as a work in which there is a routine, there is a rest, there is a progress and there is a pleasure. When all these four elements are combined together in a work, it becomes a wholesome work. Now, there is also another definition. This wholesome work is called the organic work or karma. Karma is an organic work. And what is the karma? Now, I think Indian philosophy has discussed it so much. One of the uh, Mahatma Gautam Buddha, 2600 years back, gave the law of karma. Gita also gives the law of karma. Karmanne vadhikar se maaphale I mean, that converting work into karma becomes a part of learning. 
That means taking holistic view of everything. I think this is the whole point. And therefore, uh, I will not go into law of karma, but it is worth seeing that how our people were thinking of laws of karma 2,600 years back. And they did not use anything else except rationality. Except rationality. That is a big point of it. So what are the strategies and principles for application in education? Three things necessary for brain activity, engagement, strategies, and principles. So strategies form teaching content in small, even smaller chunks and sizes. The reason is that you are having a thinking brain and you have a brain, brain for memory. So like a computer, there is a working memory and there is a storing memory. So working memory is here, hippocampus. And at hippocampus, has a working memory. If you give more and more and more in it, the earlier part will be pushed out and only new will be taken. So at the end, you will find that not much is accepted. At the end of a long lecture, you will find that students have forgotten many things. So why to teach so the student forget it? That is the point. That's why I make it small. So two to four, I think at one time we were saying that's up to seven, plus or minus something. So. It is coming from the management and other things. There is a mathematical reasons also for that. One can go into the details. But then that was the plus or minus seven coming from management side. But the brain learning gives you two to four if the subject is complex or which is difficult. But if it is easy and known subject, then give it four to eight. In terms of time chunks, it is two to four minutes for the difficult one. And if it is the easier one, 8 to 14, 15 minutes, not more than that. Then what is the suggested things? Then in the teaching process, you must always rather allow brain to rest. Now how to allow brain to rest? That is the point. That means you make it active. And through that input activity or engagement, let brain think. That means it processes that information. So when, till it processes and accepts through reconstruction of the experiences inside neurons, keep him at rest. So while lecturing, I sh it should not be lecture like me just now, but after every few minutes there should be rest. Rest for your brain and something else to come. And that's why some management people say, come on, hands up, talk fast, or something like that. And they rather try to do something different. That means you want, they want brain to rest and your other activity to get engaged. So that is one more point. So the guidelines are coming up for education, two to four chunks and not more. Now this gives you a process of learning. And process of learning, mind well, another point. Even though the nature has this law, does not mean that the people were not knowing it. They were knowing it from the effects of it. Experimental observation, they have created some sort of processes. For example, this process, approach, development, learning, and internalization. Approach is based on strategies and functions. Deployment is based on engagement. Learning is the outcome of all these processes. And internalization is organizational acceptance of the learning. Now this is process which is called Adley in Baldrige model. And Baldrige model can be used as a best learning process model. And that is the foundation of quality assurance program in performance based education or per performance excellence program. The new education...